most ultimate, ultimately, ultimate EX box you've ever seen. Legendary edition. It's blue. It's got a screen. It's got buttons. What more can you want? MTV Zoom. Extreme blue. Screen. Whoa. 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 It's the ultimate Xbox, man. Look at that. Whoa. There's all sorts of crazy gadgets going on. Look at those LEDs lighting up, oh yeah. It's even blue on the inside, man. Look at those controller ports and the screen saying stuff. Look at all the stuff it's saying. Even the buttons are blue, man. It even knows that I eat poop, oh yeah. All right, dudes. So I just wanna show you what's going on under the hood here of my ultimate, ultimate the most ultimate ultimate legendary Xbox. And as you can see, we've got an X3 Team Executor mod chip, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, the most coveted of OG Xbox mod chips. It's just the best, um, hands down. Open Xeniums are cool. Um, alternative, modern, I mean, Xenium chips are also pretty rad. But the X3, it's just, it's the only chip that'll run the X3 BIOS. Which is a fantastic BIOS. We'll be getting into that a little bit later. And it has support for the even more coveted dun, 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 X3 CP control panel. It's a fantastic device. I've spent a fortune on this faceplate and I would do it again because they are not easy to come by, especially one that's blue like this matching my beautiful blue xbox so the x3 is badass but it's kind of the um kind of the most basic thing going on here we also have the ram upgrades got heat sinks on each of these ram chips uh very very nice but what you might notice is that heat sink there being non-stock Got some wires coming over here. Uh, this is N64 Freaks CPU interloper board. So it's basically a PCB that you need to remove the original CPU and you can upgrade it with a compatible CPU. Get a bit more, um, squeeze a bit more juice out of your Xbox. Now, these interloper boards are not common really. And the biggest thing is finding someone who, with the capabilities, the tools, and the skill set to install one of these, which, you know, some of you I'm probably a scrub, some of you I'm probably, uh, you know, more advanced when it comes to my modding abilities, and this is absolutely way out of my comfort zone for my skill set and the tools that I own it's just crazy um, but yeah you can, you need to re, uh, remove the CPU reball it and um, reball the new one flow that onto the PCB flow the PCB onto the board it's a gnarly mod to do uh, by any anybody's standards but uh, yeah this is very cool to have and the backstory here for this board, it's kind of uh, kind of funny. I I purchased on eBay an X3 Pro switch, which is similar to the X3 CP minus it minus the whole control panel. It just takes the original, um, you know, the bank switch looks more like that for it as opposed to the uh, the standard one with little switches. So keep your eyes out for the um, Redux R3 DUX chip. These have been reverse engineered. 
uh, by Kakul over there at uh, Chimerick Systems. They're, they're totally open source. Anyone can make them. It's just the chip shortage is so shitty that no one, uh, I don't think anyone's even bothered to get the parts required to put these together. Uh, but yeah, that's what's going on under the hood. I did have initially, this came with the N64 Freak um, HDMI board, which I have since removed. Uh, reason being is, that for the way I understand it, that just taps into the uh, component signal and converts it to HDMI. I've got my RetroTINK 5X, um, so it would just be a bit redundant because I would it doesn't have HDMI inputs on it, so I would have to go from um, HDMI, convert it to component, and then hook that up uh, to my scaler, which just seems, um, you know, why bother? I had a spare multi-app port from a HD Plus board, so I just went with that, and I'm going to go straight component into the Tink 5X. Uh, looks fantastic and I you know I just kind of like having the standard multi app board there's way more options with it for uh, what you want to do so that is that and then you know the HD plus uh, kits I've installed quite a few of those but the, the my problem with them is you know they're kind of software dependent like you need to run a modified uh, version of Evo X for it to be supported properly or whatever and you know we're rocking an x3 so i'm not gonna have an have an x3 in my system uh to just install evo x on it that would that would be a big that's a pretty big compromise to make in my opinion to have to use a a more basic bitch bios when i've got an x3 i just don't want to do it so uh, yeah, this is this is pretty ultimate to me and the OG I had an internal OG X360 But I am currently just in the market for um, Just a little dongle for player one Just because it gets real messy in here internally. I would like to just do a You know like tiny 8-bit dough style dongle would be nice. So uh, Waiting on one of those. I think there's one in the works. So, so yeah, let's uh you know, let me show you what this bad boy can do. Let's let's get some footage here. Look at that boot up screen, gang. Ain't that nice. Now, if you hold the white button on boot with the X3 BIOS, you will come in here in this lovely live menu where you can tweak all sorts of things the one thing that's really nice exclusive to the x3 is the full-blown uh, boot up screen you can change the flubber colors change the xbox logo you can really dial it in it comes with some presets if you want to get a little crazy you can um, fine-tune every little color that you want you can also randomize it so every time you boot it up you'll have a random flubber animation a very nice touch <clears throat> would love to see something like that on other bioses uh, you can mess with the fan mess with the led colors on the ring of light all of that from the xbox not needing to use software on your computer patching bioses it's just all there you can lock your hard drive um, do all that back up your EEPROM restore your EEPROM uh, pretty much anything you would want to be able to do with an Xbox BIOS you can do here with X3 and uh, the chip itself can save multiple BIOSes to it the X3 is one megabyte so it's very very large um, and I think it's a total of two so I have two copies of X3 on here one is uh, force 480p and one is vanilla and here we are in the XBMC for gamers 
and thanks to the 128 megs of RAM here we're breezing through it if you do this on a on a uh, non upgraded original Xbox it's still nice but it's you won't be able, it won't be as snappy as this this is pretty snappy cover arts loaded in much quicker really getting around well um, it's not chugging along booting up some Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 here as you can see the LCD will show the game we're playing Tony Hawk Pro Scat a very nice little feature it's really a gimmick at the end of the day but it's fucking cool I like it it's a damn good gimmick I'm back in the home screen here going to the emulators I've got my coin ops ninja massive which is a very sweet front end for the original Xbox here just a dope collection a bunch of games it's very you know reminiscent of like a launch box or something like that this is on PC as well um, different versions of coin ops but it started humble beginnings here on the original Xbox some of those screens are chugging along might have something to do with the upgraded CPU as you can you'll see in just a moment here when we boot up a game the speeds are all off that is one of the downsides with the uh, with the upgraded CPU is you're supposed to have a toggle switch and that's going to be something for a later later date maybe a, a later video is I'm, I need to work out some sort of clean toggle si switch solution to turn off um, to dial down my CPU to stock speeds so mine does not have one there's an input for a toggle switch on the CPU interloper board there uh, some games will play way too fast especially like Xbox games like stock Xbox games they'll just play way too fast and you need to be able to toggle from what I have here is 1.4 megahertz dialed it down to uh, I think the stock is 733 but games that can take advantage of the faster CPU will run much much nicer here we are in Aliens running way too fast yeah it's just uh, it's just not good so this is where the toggle switch comes in handy you want to be able to dial that down a little bit We are in the PS1 emulator, booting it up, and this one does take advantage of the faster CPU clocks here. It really, really is running really well. Now hopefully the X3, I haven't looked into it in a minute, there is a patch going around to be able to patch your BIOS to be able to use an 8 terabyte hard drive. Hopefully, um, one comes out for the X3 BIOS, I believe. Last time I checked, which was very recently, it was only available for Evo X. But if that patch comes out for X3, I might be popping in an 8 terabyte, getting the entire collection of Xbox games. I have pretty much everything, but the benefit is I'd be able to Check in here the full PS1 library, Sega CD, and really get a nice experience 
emulating on this souped up Xbox here because just look at this it's PS1 is running incredibly well on the original Xbox here Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of the video here. That is my ultimate Xbox. There's still some things to do, some work to be done. I just want to go over that real fast. So the first thing is getting a toggle switch designed and installed to dial in that CPU down to stock speeds on the fly. Boom, stock. Boom, uh, 1.4. So something like this is what I'm thinking. This came with an open source internal OGX360 kit that I grabbed a little while back. And what this does, it just sits on the, uh, well it would sit on my X3 control panel there, the face plate, just right at the bottom, right below the eject and power button and instead of you know a USB port with a switch like this I would like to get one with just a nice little uh, nice little push button so you can toggle from stock speeds all the way up to 1.4 megahertz there the megahertz gigahertz so that is on the top of the list gotta get something like this designed that's just a push button wires into the interloper board or maybe I could do something neat with the uh, the buttons that are already on there maybe the protect button have that serve another purpose of um, dialing up the speeds so there is that uh, second would be I don't have a USB cable for my control panel not really doesn't really matter um, I don't really care about using those USB ports all that much, but for the sake of completing it, that could be nice. Uh, next up would be the 8 terabyte upgrade. Hopefully there's a patch for the X3 BIOS, and if there is, once there is, I will be patching those BIOSes uh, with those files. That would be fantastic. I would love to get an 8 terabyte and then just chuck the entire PS1 library on there chuck Sega CD um, all of that shit never running out of room on an OG Xbox with 8 terabytes so that would be fantastic and the last possible upgrade I could think of for that thing would be if Pixel Effects, Black Dog Tech those dudes end up making an HDMI kit which I know they've uh, been working on here and there. They make one of those and it's not dependent on software like the current um, Make Megahertz one is, uh, then I'll consider installing that in this console for sure. And the the Make Megahertz HD Plus is a, it's a fantastic device. I have, I have two, I've got the Legacy, I've got the HD Plus. Uh, the only issue is the software dependencies being uh, needing Evo X, like a modified, heavily modified version of Evo X, which just isn't something I'm interested in doing on an X3 original Xbox. If you've got an X3 mod chip, you want to run the X3 BIOS, and unfortunately, that's just not possible currently with the make megahertz hdmi board so that's all she wrote dudes uh thank you for watching leave a like if you liked it and i'll see you guys later